morning lovely people Tracy Jane Campbell here welcome to lay aside the weight we are on day three of our juice detox how are you feeling if you're doing this with me at any time um, I am very windy got a lot of wind and I know that's the whole heap of cabbage <laughs> only the cabbage and greens actually eating um, but other than that I feel okay I haven't started feeling that uh, detox feeling as yet, but because it's not my first time, I don't know if that's anything to do with it. I've never done it at this age. So I'm just seeing how it goes. So don't forget to start your day with your lemon water. Really important. Start the system going. Right, so today, day three. <clears throat> now, oh, before I start, I have to say I made a mistake yesterday with our second helping of our um, kale and avocado salad we were supposed to have something called a raw carrot and ginger soup which is a cold kind of cold soup I didn't do it I completely overlooked it I should have done it because of all the nutrients and everything but today it's also going to be part of one of our meals so you'll have an extra helping left over which you can freeze and it says you can freeze it and save for a snack. And it also says that about the soup today as well. The soups are, are like four helpings. So what the book says is you use one for that meal. There's another two you're going to use for the rest in the rest of the week and freeze one for when you're transitioning out of this detox. Because transitioning out is, is, is as important as transitioning in. The worst thing you want to do is have five three five fifteen thirty days of a juice detox and then go out the next morning and say you're gonna have a, a fry up or you want to have a steak or you want to have a, you want to transition out that's one thing i learned the hard way okay years ago it's not good for your gut it can cause you a lot of disturbance trust me anyway so today's breakfast is on day three i'm looking down because i'm looking at the book is get your green smoothie and the get your greens smoothie now i said about a juicer but i also have a, a ninja and so you do need a blender uh, for the smoothies uh, which i forgot to mention but hopefully you have one so the get your green smoothie let's see what's that two app no that's not it that's that's not it wait wait hold on a minute wait hold on father abraham so the Get Your Green Smoothie is found in the breakfast section of the book. And the Get Your Green Smoothie is half a cucumber, one celery, one apple cord, one cup of water, three leaves of kale, three romaine or cos lettuce leaves, half a banana, that half of that frozen banana that you at the beginning should have peeled and chopped up, put in the freezer, half of that handful of ice cubes and one date is optional i've got some medjool dates because i like dates and you can throw that in there without the seed and basically that's your blend that's your smoothie that's two servings and you'll have one that's a breakfast and then you'll have the second one for tomorrow's breakfast right so you can put that in the fridge and you'll be good lunch is Mid-morning snack is a green lemonade, which is really nice. I've had this one before. Green lemonade is a mid-morning snack, and that is two apples, four handfuls of spinach, 16 kale leaves, one cucumber, four celery sticks, and two lemons. That's a juice, all right? That's for your mid-morning snack and for your afternoon snack. Remember, the juices are two helpings two servings so for lunch you're having it's the squash and apple soup sounds interesting isn't it for the squash and apple soup you need one acorn or butternut squash one small onion diced two carrots diced one tablespoon of olive oil nine cups of vegetable stock two apples sliced and seasoning okay so the oven is 230 450 fahrenheit or gas mark eight you put the two halves of the squash flesh down seeds out remove the seeds in one to two cups of water in a baking dish and you put that in the oven for 40 to 50 minutes 
So you only cut them in half, okay? You don't um, chop them up. And then in a pan, you put the oil and you saute some onions and carrots for five minutes. Then you add the stock and the apple and you simmer for 10 minutes. And then you peel, let the squash peel, please. No, but up yourself. And then you peel the squash and you add it to the stock, beat it in. And you can blend it, to, you can puree it. All right. If you have a blender that can do, well, you can wait for it to cool, then blend it into a soup and then warm it back up if that works. But if for you, that is lunch. OK, that's the squash and apple soup. It's four servings. So, again, what the book says is you have one, two will be used throughout throughout the week and freeze one for transitioning out of this detox. OK, and dinner. This is that soup that I forgot. Now, this is this raw carrot and ginger soup. By the looks of it, you're supposed to have it cold. I'm not going to boil it, <laughs> but I'm going to put it in the pot and just, just warm it a little bit. I'm going to do that. You don't have to do that. Because that's like a, it's like a starter because the main course is roasted acorn squash stuffed with mushroom and sage. All right, so with the roasted acorn squash. Now, I didn't know what an acorn squash was. And my very extensive uh, market, they had small squashes. And the book says you can have a small pumpkin or just a small squash as well, but not butternut. Okay, so it's, oh, I stand corrected. It says one small acorn or butternut squash or a small pumpkin i've got a small pumpkin two tablespoons of olive oil for brushing one small onion chopped two cloves of garlic mince crush it one large portobello mushroom two teaspoons of finely chopped sage and seasoning so you preheat the oven 230 450 or gas mark eight Trim the end of the squash and then stand it upright and cut in half length ways. Scoop out the seeds, brush the squash with oil and then sprinkle with your sea salt and pepper. Cut down, place cut down, flesh down on a baking sheet or on par parchment paper and roast till tender in the oven and golden brown, 25 to 35 minutes, but you gauge whether it's tender or not. And then you take the olive oil, put it in a pan, medium heat, add your onions and garlic, saute those, then add the mushroom and the sage with your seasoning and saute until the mushroom's a bit soft, uh, about five minutes, really quick. Then remove the baked squash from the oven, cut it up, then fill your squash with the mushroom mixture. Um, I'm hoping you're getting this book because that will really help. I'm only just reading out the five, first five days of recipes to help you along. If you have not started yet and you want to join the journey, you can look at the prep videos that are posted here. You can also look at day one. They I have posted underneath the video the shopping list for the first five days. As I said, I'm not going to be breaking down this guy's book. Just wanted you to, to, to get you kick started and, and hopefully you get the book and then you can follow along and we can discuss how it goes. OK, so. That's day three, day three. It's good. And if you are doing this and you've got this far, brilliant, because it's not easy, especially if you've it's your first time. It can, It's really it can be really challenging. So. I just want to say well done for you for that well done to me well done to me I, i'm gonna go and do workout after this that's why i just thought let me get ready and then get on get on yesterday i touched on briefly like the psychological aspects of of weight loss and how important that is and i think in my in my early days because all of this weight business started really early with me i found an exercise book from school of mine and I, I've always kept journals and diaries and my I was using my exercise book for a, for a journal and they always had 
drawings of clothes that I was designing, <laughs> stories, my thoughts and feelings, what's happening, and poems and diets. I found one with a few diets in it. I couldn't believe it. Could not believe it. And I must have, that must be from about 12 or 13 years old. So this has been in my head somehow for a really long time. And I know in childhood, I had a lot of trauma and lots of issues with my body because of that, um, because of abuse and what have you. And we're not going into that, but lots of things happen that let us hold on to trauma in our bodies. And I had a protective layer of fat. Now I wasn't even that big. Uh, when I was younger, you know, when you find pictures of yourself when you're younger and you thought you were humongous and you look at the pictures and you think, but men never that big, you know, however, I'm just saying that to say the journey um, of weight loss and the yo-yoing and the back and forth and the fighting with it can start really early and mine did. So one of the core things that I, I think that we, that we have to do that I constantly do is Think about the process of this journey, praying through it, having times of meditation. If you are in counselling and all of that, that's really good. That's a good thing um, for this. If this is causing you a lot of, if this has been causing you a lot of stuff over your life. I know lots of people say, well, I was just, I was even reading today. Somebody was, somebody was trying to help um, with someone's weight loss journey and someone jumped on. It's just calories in and calories out. It's as simple as that. And I'm like, yeah, yes. Technically, it is. You're absolutely right. But there's more to it than that. We are humans. We have other things going on. For sure, our brain programming is a deep thing. It really is. As soon as you, if you've been going left all of your life because you were taught to go left, because you just, that's what you've been doing and it's comfortable. The brain is comfortable with left. The minute you say you're going to go right, you're going to have to reset some stuff. All right. So be easy, be easy on yourself. Um, be disciplined. We're working on the discipline, but also love yourself. Take care of yourself. Don't abuse yourself. Don't speak negatively over yourself. Don't speak negatively over your body. Don't speak negatively over your body. Don't say, oh, I hate this and I hate that. I want to change various things, but... I don't hate myself and my body, I'm so thankful, has carried me through 51 years of life. And I'm very grateful for this wonderful, powerful, amazing, magnificent body that I have. So do not do that. Take your time with yourself. The only person that can change and um, work on the changing of your mind, seriously, your programming is you. You have to be committed to you the only person that can do this work is you so you have to love yourself through this process it's really important berating yourself is not going to work berating yourself causes you to be strict like a legalist strict on yourself strict beat yourself into submission you might do the thing and and drop a whole of weight and then you'll put it right back on because you did it from a place of self-loathing and that's a real thing. And I, the reason why I'm speaking like this is because I've done it. I've done it countless times, countless times. So I'm not just chatting breeze. You know what I mean? I'm talking about something that I've done. I no longer do. Um, that's why this is, this is life. You know, this is the kickstart of life, of doing life differently. For me, going back to what I was doing somewhat before I had my hysterectomy, which turned my absolute body upside down. I'll talk about that more. Um, and some new stuff that I learned because I had a new body. So it is a process and you have to love yourself for it. You can't hate yourself for it, okay? You are wonderfully made, okay? I have been reading about the brain for the past... I don't know, on and off for the past year. And just because I'm absolutely fascinated with how we are created. We're created fabulously. But if we don't kind of tune in, not everyone's going to read those books. I, I hear that. But I mean, it's so good to learn, you know, because you've been praying, turn around, touch around, touch two people, blah, 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 blah
I believe prayer works. I believe in the power of prayer, but I also believe in prayer and potato, right? We have things that let us, uh, that are out there to teach us how we function. And for sure, the spirit of God has, <laughs> if it wasn't for the spirit of God, I wouldn't be here. I, there has been counseling and teaching and, and learning that I have received in the presence of God. There is no doubt about that. However, we have to engage our will. We have to be willing to understand that regardless of, oh, we are made a certain way. So actually, yes, how you speak, how you think is imperative. So if you find yourself getting overrun with self-loathing, thoughts about cravings, thoughts about food, all of that, drink, drink the juices, drink the water and speak to yourself. Pray, but speak well of yourself. Declare, speak who you are. Speak to your body. It's really, it sounds, for some, well, for some people it might sound, Ooh, but it's not that. Speak to your body. It's really important. Before I go, I want to share one thing. Years ago, I was in this, you know, I've been through a through a process of learning, unlearning, relearning for years now. And there was one time I was in a very bad spot and I was in my kitchen, probably thinking about this whole eating thing and how am I going to get rid of this weight and blah, blah, blah. And I was listening to an Indie RE song and it's called Private Party. One section of that song just leapt out to me. And if you're a bit touchy about body, I'm not touchy about body. Our bodies are fabulous, right? There's a part of the song that says, I'm going to take off all my clothes. I'm going to look in the mirror and I'm going to have a discussion basically and heal the disconnection. And I realized in that moment how disconnected I was from my body. I had a dualistic relationship with my body. My body was kind of this thing and I was there. I was not in communion with my body at all and I was in that kitchen just crying because she says I'm going to heal the disconnection I don't know where it started but this is where it's going to end my body is beautiful and sacred that's what that line says and I tell you that did a whole shift just just that crying praying listening to that and and realizing that the holy spirit really spoke to me with that song saying you have a disconnect and uh, that's what it is so that's my experience okay so i hope that can encourage somebody today on day three ha all right laters